started. So I'm going to go to codity.netlify.app, changing the website to 18 and then maybe a dark theme so we can see. I'm going to create a container element and then within the container element, uh, I'm going to create a div. I'm going to use lorem and then multiply it by, let's say, maybe 35. So now this gives me enough text so that I can put my element down there uh, in order to actually bring it into the viewport by scrolling. So after that, I'm going to create a div. Uh, let me just go down a bit here so you can see div and then with the class my box, let's call it my box. And then after that, I'm going to put another lorem uh, and then maybe this time, maybe 10. And then I'm going to go and style this. So for the container, I'm going to say width, maybe 70% margin, 30 pixel on top, auto, and then maybe 100 pixel on the bottom, and then auto again, so that it kind of centers it. So you can see we have enough text so that when we put the box over here, we have a good effect. So now I'm going to say my box since I put this class for it. Let's give it a width of 100%, height of 300 pixel, color maybe white, background, let's give it an almost dark gray, so 555. Let's say display flex so that we can center the text in it, center for the justify content and align items also center. Let's give it a margin of maybe 30 pixel and zero. So top, top and bottom 30 pixel and then zero. So you can see we have this box over here. Um, let's, let's put something in it. So let's call it, I'm just gonna remove this space here, finding that div, which is here. Uh, let's put some spaces so you can see where it is. I'm going to be revealed when I intersect the viewport, right? So right now you see there is no effect whatsoever here. So there's nothing. Now we want to add our uh, code to make it reveal. In order to do that, I'm going to add a class called FX reveal. So let's, let's have a class called FX reveal. And in that FX reveal, fx reveal what i really want to do is just define the transition that i want to have so here you can see when i come here there is like this transition i want to define that transition so the transition let's say it's transform let's say it's zero point maybe five seconds and then the timing function is is out so that's the only thing i want on my fx reveal now let's add a class and the way I'm, I'm teaching you right now is so that you can add any other effect that you want to do. At this point, I just made the translate up. You can make translate down, scale, skew, you know, rotate and all those. Uh, so for that, I'm going to say FX reveal and then let's call this class translate up, right? So what it means is that I, when, when I add this, I want it to initially start somewhere down here. And then when, I, uh, when it becomes visible in the viewport, I want to translate it to zero uh, so that it actually gets positioned at the place where it is right now. So I'm going to get this class name going here. And the only thing I want to do is say transform, translate, y because it's on the y axis right and then let's say maybe uh 60 pixel that's it now this is this is now you can see that it actually came down so it depends on what you want to say 100 for example we'll put it down here and then ultimately when <clears throat> this becomes visible in the viewport you want it to come to the original place which is zero right so right here so let's just start with 100 for now, 100 pixel. And then when it comes to the viewport in JavaScript, we're going to create a code that actually detects that this box is now visible in our viewport so that we can apply this effect to it. So I'm going to create a new class called FX reveal and then revealed. So meaning that now I can apply this so that it gets revealed. So when I set the transform, 
to be zero. Right, so now we do have uh, the classes that we really need. Now in the JavaScript, I'm going to create a, a to be revealed element. And then I would say document dot query selector. And we know that we gave it a class fx reveal, right? Now let's create our uh, observer or intersection observer. This is a low level JavaScript API that actually detects whether an element is intersecting another element or the viewport itself. So I'm going to create a class card called uh, create observer. And then within that, I'm going to say const observer and then new intersection observer. And that's the class that we want to use. It's called intersection observer. And this intersection observer later on, I can say observe to be revealed element. So our intersection observer observes the element, which is this box over here. So now the interesting cool part is that this intersection observer ha has actually two <clears throat> arguments. So the first one is, is a callback function. So I'm just going to add an empty arrow function here for now. And the second one is an option. So for the option, since we are interested to uh, intersect the element uh, to the viewport, the only thing I want to do is a option. And this is an object, as you can see, root margin. And then I'm going to say zero pixel, zero pixel, zero pixel, zero pixel, right? Then I'm going to change it. <clears throat> so you can see it's, it's like, uh, you know, the syntax is originally like CSS, so zero from top, then right, then bottom, then left. So if I change this, for example, to minus 100 pixel, it means that whatever element that it is observing, if 100 pixel of it uh, actually gets revealed by itself within the viewport, then whatever this callback is, I want to call it, right? So let's put it for 100 pixel for now. And then there are two um, parameters here that you can add. One is the uh, entries, and then the other one is the observer itself. So entries is basically the number of elements that you're observing, right? In this, in this example. So I can do entries dot for each and then entry. And then <clears throat> it's very important here. Now you have the entry. Now the entry itself has a property called is intersecting. So if entry is intersecting at this point, the entry is only one to be revealed. That's why I can do a for each and also check because there's only one thing here. So now I want to add my class. So I'm going to say to be revealed element dot class list dot add. And then if you remember, we created this FX reveal revealed, which puts the translate Y to zero. So now I'm going to go here and then add this. So our code is ready. The only thing I want to do is call this create observer method that I created. So what we should see now is when, so basically we have our element, we create an observer. When our observer intersects, uh, the observer actually observing the intersection between the viewport and also the element that it is observing down here. So now if you, if you notice when I scroll down, nothing happens, right? Now we want to see why. Okay, so let's go back to our CSS FX reveal, FX reveal trans actually translate up. So this needs to be translate up. And then we do have a transition transform. And then I actually use transform 100 pixel and then revealed would be translate Y to zero pixels. So that's fine. <clears throat> now we have the entries here. We have the observer entries for each entry. If entry is intersecting to be re revealed element class list dot add fx reveal revealed. And then our root margin is zero, 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 zero observer observe 
to be allowed and then create observer. We can actually take a look at here if we see there is any problem. Intersection observer parameter one is not on not of type element. Let's see it's actually true. So let's bring it here again. Fail to execute observe on um, parameter one is not of type element. So what it means is that there is something wrong here and that is correct. I have to define the query selector to be selecting using the uh, dot which is the class as we've defined now if I scroll down you'll see that you have this cool revealing animation right so again observer the observer observes the viewport with the element and then uh, whatever you observe will be part of these entries you check if the property is intersecting is true then you add the class fx reveal revealed which actually applies this then makes it from 100 pixel to zero and hence it actually moves it up uh, at this point you see it only runs it once but if you want to have it whenever you scroll up and scroll down you want the animation to be run again you can do an else here and then get this to be revealed and then you say remove right so now if I scroll down, you'll see that you have this. And if I scroll up again, if I scroll down, you'll see the animation actually takes place. So the good thing about this intersection observer, because it's a low level JavaScript API, is that it doesn't run on the main thread of the browser, right? Which is great because then it's not going to block or sort of um, lower the uh, performance of your website in a way that your observers or uh, or your viewers actually get annoyed so I um, really strongly recommend you to take a look at this there are so many effects uh, visual effects in the websites that happen using this reveal or the scroll or, or many other things so again uh, if you enjoyed this tutorial please like and share this tutorial subscribe to my channel and let me know if you have any questions uh, i will gladly answer you uh, in the comment section or, or you can send me a private message as well uh, i wish you a great day and night wherever you are and see you next time thank you